California GMC Finals. Back to turn tournament director, along with Doug Hammond, his partner in this event. And we were just talking, guys, about 12 years ago, you started it out at Capo Beach. And uh, we talked about that event briefly. But, uh, Daryl, you've been on the show a couple times. How did we get to Lake Mission Viejo? And give us an idea about the feeling of the event now. Well, you know, it's just the, the event's gone so far. I mean, it started off as a small event, and just that so we're going to have some fun and put some, you know, guys, a lot of uh, guys, local guys together and to play in a tournament. And it's just gotten bigger and bigger, and the players have gotten better and better. And uh, so we wanted to showcase those players, and this is a great place to showcase the local talent. Yeah. And uh, everybody gets to come out in a nice atmosphere and watch great volleyball being played. And Doug, Daryl mentioned talent, and it's kind of strange because the uh, champions from last year, uh, John Blackburn and Larry Barnett, who already were champions last year, they are, they've already gotten beaten this year. And so we've got some guys out there that have done real well in the last couple of years, like the Friedman brothers, they're knocked out. What do you see the change, the younger talent coming up? Yeah, they're younger, they're bigger, they're stronger. Um, it's just a changing of the guard. Yeah. What do you think? I know that uh, luckily we have this umbrella that we're sitting underneath to today, but with the heat, it's pretty pretty hot, over 90 degrees out there. What have you seen so far? Has it hurt the players or has it aided some and hurt others? Well, the players are, you know, beach volleyball players are used to it. Uh, that's part of the game. Uh, sometimes when it gets down to the end, it is the survival of the fittest. And these guys work real hard. Uh, so they're used to playing in these kinds of conditions. The hotter it gets, though, the harder it gets. Yeah, and uh, Daryl, the uh, event will go into the semifinals and the finals. The finals will be in the later part of the afternoon. In that type of event, give us an idea of what kind of teams you would like to see in a final. Well, you always want to see a, a more, uh, the crowd, it's more crowd pleasing teams are the ones that are big blockers, big hitters. Uh, and they're not, you know, the the, uh, the dink shooters or the guys that are, uh, you know, the, the placement players. You don't want placement players in the finals because they're a lot boring to watch, but they're still good players. They're just not as fun to watch for the crowd. Yeah. Well, it's going to be enjoyable to watch everybody out here today. We'll talk more about volleyball at the 11th Annual Midsummer Classic right here on Coach's Corner. And then the game of the week coming up right after Coach's Corner. We'll be back here in just a minute. It's Fiesta time in beautiful San Clemente. On Sunday, August 8th, come to the Spanish Village by the Sea, San Clemente, and join the 1993 Fiesta Street Festival. It's free. It's fun. Bring the family, play games, dance to the music, and enjoy the food. Salsa challenges, tacos, hot dogs, pizza, and more. Start the day by entering the Fiesta 5000 5K Run Stride Walk. The gun sounds at 8 o'clock, so don't be late. Fiesta by the Sea, August 8th in San Clemente. This summer, HBO makes a great catch. The game's getting pretty exciting. See Madonna swing. Gina Davis score. You see me slip in the back seat. You make a man out of me. And Tom Hanks strike out. <laughs> no crying? There's no crying in baseball. It's better than box seats. I love these girls. Catch a league of their own. This month on HBO and Dimension Cable. Play ball. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to this week's edition of Coach's Corner on location at Lake Mission VA. We're talking volleyball as we do every time this time of the year. And joining me right now is Aaron Garcia and Dave Holloway. Both these gentlemen have been on Coach's Corner before. This is Aaron's third time. And Dave, this is your second time in about two years. And Aaron, you're becoming quite popular around here on the set of Coach's <laughs> Corner. Tell me about the event this week. Uh, I know that uh, you guys got knocked off, but it's a double elimination. So you have a chance to go pretty much through the back door to reach the finals. Right. Is that, I, is that good, getting knocked off? Um, no, it's never good to lose. But in essence, all it is is that you play one more game. So no big deal. We just brush it off. and. Mentally, is that tough bit. out here, guys, with the heat? And knowing that maybe you could have won, but you didn't, so now you got to go back out in the heat where you might have been in the shade waiting for the next game. What about that, Dave? That's that's true. I I, I think that when you take a loss, like the one we just took, it, it sometimes bring back some, brings back an edge that you need to, to go out there and play even harder the next time, though. Yeah. So um, it was a tough loss, but I think we should respond pretty yeah. well. These, both these two gentlemen are pretty incredible volleyball players to say the least. Uh, Aaron's going to be going to Stanford, he's a freshman, and then uh, 
uh, Dave is going to be a senior at Long Beach State, and Dave's obviously, we're talking about Brent Hilliard that uh, you play with at Long Beach State, and talking about that he's going to be a member of the Olympic team again. When you look at a player like that and play with a player like that, does it obviously help your game? Oh, yeah, the experience that he's had, um, he like, it comes down to you because he's just, he's, he was the captain last year of the team. He's gone now, but he's the captain last year. And you look at him, and you always just look to him, and he always seems to know exactly what you need to be doing. And, uh, yeah, he's a, he's a great influence for, for our team last year. What makes him such a great volleyball player? I remember in high school, I interviewed him, and I watched him go through high school, and, and he did some great things there. But what makes him separate from the rest? Uh, he gets up and hits the ball really hard, and he's got such great range in his shoulder. He can hit the ball all the way, both ways. Some uh -huh. people don't have that range, and he's got great range. Plus, I mean, he gets up. Yeah. yeah. And Aaron, we were talking about just moments ago before we went on about the difference between playing in sand and then playing on the court. You're going to be playing on the court another month or so. Does this help your game? I'm sure it helps your jumping, but does it help all, all parts of your game? Definitely. It helps all around defense. Just, uh, you know, knowing where to be. I mean, indoor volleyball is a little more structured. You know, you have certain positions that you have to play, and, and here it's a little more freelance. Yeah. You know, just guessing and things, but it definitely helps your all-around game. You have to set the ball, you have to block the ball, you know, you have to get up and hit and passing. And yeah, it definitely helps your indoor game. Aaron, why do you guys compliment each other on the court? Obviously, you've done real well. Why do you guys compliment? What does he do that you don't do and vice versa? Anything? I think we're both real, we're real comparable players. And um, a lot of teams have a, a big, strong blocker and one guy who plays defense, you know. Mm -hmm. And, but what we have is we can both do it all. You know, we can, we'll switch off and both block the ball, you know, so okay. we don't make a whole lot of mistakes, you know, and when we do, it's, you know, they're not real costly. So I think that's probably what it is. It's pretty easy to say that you're more of a balanced attack where like uh, Bobby and Steve Friedman, they exactly. play their style. And if you guys find that uh, maybe Steve's not returning the ball that you, the way uh, the way that uh, Bobby does, you'll just go to him and, yep. uh, and that helps. But with you guys, it's kind of an added advantage since you're so balanced. Is that right, Dave? Yeah, definitely. What, what is it about this tournament that brings so many people out here in the local event? There's really no money at stake, but it's, it's right. an event of bragging rights, so to speak. It's just really fun. It's well organized. You've got Life Beer from Miller sponsoring it and Club, and it brings a lot of people. It's at the lake. It's a beautiful day right yeah. now. It's maybe too <laughs> hot. <but laughs> beautiful in the shade. It's about yeah. over 90 degrees out there. What do you think about your next your next contest you got coming up? Who will you play? Toby Braun and his partner. And Tim Mulatto. And they're a finesse team. You got to pick up the shots, um, play a steady game. We'll do all right. And I know that you guys know how Toby plays. He's he's a kind of a sneaky player. Are you guys sneaky at all? Like what, what he does, he kind of dinks it over every now and then. No, we don't need to be. <laughs> <laughs> not not not. not, not so opposite that. of We're that, a you're power team compared power to the team. best nest. Yeah. Is that is that a, is that hard to play against someone that does that? Does that kind of keep you on the balls of your feet? Wondering, well, what's he gonna do now? Yeah. yeah, well, you have to be on the balls of your feet for Toby. Yeah. He's going to go over on two a lot. So I think we'll be okay, though, because we know what's going to happen. Yeah, and Aaron, talking about your college career is getting ready to get started, the the pressures of you coming out of high school, I would say, maybe are, are kind of down now. You get a chance to get your feet wet back in in a new area, going to Stanford, but a big school. Can you relax the first couple months you're there, or you do a lot of learning? Uh, I don't think I can relax, necessarily. I mean... The academic, uh, you know, schedule or, you know, it's going to be pretty tough yeah. for me. And um, I think what I do, is I do well as somewhat of an underdog, you know, and, and if I have to work real hard towards something, I'll be, I'll be a freshman again. Right. And I'll have to work real hard to, you know, make the team, or not make the team necessarily, but get that starting spot. Sure. And I work well in that position, you know. Yeah. I, I don't work too well if I have I have some space to, you know, lax off a little bit. So I think it'll be good for me. What type of, uh, I'm not familiar with the coaching style or the coach at Stanford. What kind of, how different is he than the coach over at Capistrano Valley with Ken Goldstone? I think there's a lot more discipline involved. I mean, in college volleyball as a whole, there's a lot more dis discipline involved, you know, in your training and everything like that. I don't think I'd be allowed to get away with some of the things that I've gotten away with in high school, you know. <laughs> Got to keep on the ball and keep on track of things. Well, I'm sure you're going to have a great career. I'm sure this will be the last time that I'll talk to you until probably this time next year. I want to wish you the best of luck, Aaron Garcia. Obviously a great ball player. And also, you've got uh, Dave Holloway, who's done a great job in this tournament the last couple of years. And he'll be getting ready to go in a match against Toby Braun and his partner. When we come back, we'll have a couple new players here in Coach's Corner on location at Lake Mission Bay. We'll be back with that right after this. This 
summer. The best way to see TNT's favorite movie is with everyone's favorite celebrities. Ta-da. 12 big movies, 12 big names, one brilliant TNT lineup. TNT's Our Favorite Movies, Summer Edition 93. <laughs> Thursdays and Sundays, all summer long on TNT. Your favorites are our favorites. This month on TNT and Dimension Cable. Get ready for thrilling animation in the classic Disney tradition. For the first time on television, it's the great mouse detective. Battle of Baker Street, my good fella. He's cracking the case of a criminal rat. What did you call me? And you're invited to join in the fun. Smile, everyone. So where can you look for this exclusive world television premiere? Elementary, my dear Dawson. The Great Mouse Detective, only on the Disney Channel. Another Disney classic premieres this month only on the Disney Channel and Dimension Cable. Welcome back to this week's edition of Coach's Corner on location at Lake Mission Viejo for the 11th annual Midsummer Volleyball Classic. Joining me right now is Chad Jones. His partner in the event is Dwayne Utterback, and Mike Minear is joining me also, and his partner in the event is uh, Phil Levine. Possible you guys could meet in the finals, right? Possibly. That's right. That's Let's try to get this straight. It gets kind of confusing. Chad Jones and Dwayne Utterback, they beat last year's champion of Blackburn and Barnett. In their first semifinal game, and what you'll see on the game of the week, will be against Darryl, or pardon me, Darren Utterback and Kurt Riedel. And Mike Minear and Phil Levine, they'll play the winner of the event going on, get, actually getting ready to start, which is Braun and Milotto taking on Garcia and Holloway. And that's the way it's shaping up. Did I do that right? Yeah, that's right, guys? Right. Okay. <laughs> you guys seem like pretty kickback players. What about what about out there? Are you a kickback type player? Uh, I'm kickback right now, but once on the court, it's all business. Yeah. And uh, the intensity that I play with kind of sometimes overflows and uh, I get a little too upset, but as long as I keep that in check, I kind of channel it in the right direction. Chad, sometimes the hardest thing to do is describe yourself. You just did that. Describe this player right here, Mike Lanier. Mike Lanier. <laughs> Mike's a little bit quieter player. He keeps things more into himself. He has that. He's been playing a couple more years than I have. He has a he has that channeling ability. He can channel that energy into a positive fashion. Mike, what sure. about uh, Chad? Chad's aggressive, that's for sure. He uh, <laughs> gets up there at the net and hard to hit by yeah Plays with you know emotion yells screams and i'm like you said i'm a lot different right as far as that goes i just kind of try and stay consistent and you know make good plays whether it goes good or bad i just stay consistent and that helps me out now mike you were in the finals last year right. you and phil levine and you were knocked off by barnett and blackburn i believe we were just talking about 15 to 10 and when you look back at that event that day almost a year ago right now what do you think about the finals and what will you do different this year uh, hopefully we'll score more points, but uh, I think the big key is going to be me blocking. Uh, it depends who we play, but it looks like probably Chad here, and if we can get up and block more balls than him, I'll, we'll be all right. So. What is it? I asked every player about this event. What is it that brings you out? I'm sure you've got all kinds of things you could be doing today. Um, well, it's local tourney, and you know, you're on TV, yeah. and the chance to be around all your friends and just have a good time. That's right. Now, again, I want to bring up to date Mike's dad, of course, uh, was the head coach, the basketball coach over at Mission Viejo. want to say hello to him. Last year, he didn't see you on, so hopefully this year, right. he'll see you. <laughs> he made it out here today. So. Yeah. Oh, great. Good. Good deal. And uh, I've been hearing so many good things about you, Chad. Everybody's been talking Chad Jones since I arrived. Uh, you've been playing a flawless game so far. What is it about this that you're playing so well? Just on a good streak? Uh, I think so. I've been training really hard lately, and uh, I did play the pro tournament last weekend out in Belmar Beach, and that kind of helped my game a little bit, playing against the best in, uh, in the world. And uh, coming out here, the sand's a little more hard packed. It's a little easier to get out of, uh -huh. and it uh, helps the hops get up an extra four inches, be able to press over the net a lot more. Chad, so you've qualified for the AVP tour? Uh, yeah, I placed last weekend. Give us an idea how you qualify for the AVP tour, maybe for the folks out there that are Well, familiar. the way it normally works is they have six qualifiers a year. So what you would do is the weekend before a tournament, you'd go and qualify for that region's tournaments. So, for example, if you wanted to play in San Diego and Phoenix, Arizona, they'd have a qualifier. In, uh, this year it was in Phoenix, and you qualify for both tournaments. Uh, they take the top four out of how many ever come out and play. In Phoenix, it was... 
64, I believe. Okay. So they only take the top four out of 64 teams. So it makes it real difficult. Now, when you're just getting on the circuit, do you have to qualify every week, or is it something that? You well, do it, it depends. If you can play with a player with points, the whole thing is points. If you can play with a player with points, then sometimes you don't have to qualify. Mm -hmm. But if you're just playing, you know, with somebody like myself when I first started, or someone with no points, you have to go play a qualifier and pay your dues, as okay. they say. Mike, are you? Uh, proceeding down that road of getting on the ABB tour? Yeah, I've been uh, working at it, for, you know, the past year or so and uh, starting to pay off. Like like Chad says, I've been to qualifiers all across the country and this year we finally got a couple points, so right. hopefully I won't have to qualify anymore and, yeah. and uh, just play every weekend. I know that age is uh, pretty important now in volleyball. It seems like a lot of the young guys are coming up. Mike, how old are you? 26. 26 and 23. 20, 26, 23. Seems like even the 17, 18 year old guys are getting out here hitting the ball pretty hard. That's right. Are they are they doing as good as you expect they would do? Well, just as any sport progresses, you know, the training techniques get better and volleyball was considered a girl sport for so many years that uh, they finally put the money into boys volleyball. And uh, you see better athletes coming out now because they're you know, they're better trained. And uh, they just need to progress with age. You know, yeah. 18 years old, you're a pretty young player. You, you haven't played against. Yeah, you, know, you think you're the best, <laughs> but then you get sit down, sat down real quick. <laughs> both, both you gentlemen have a lot of wisdom. Uh, when I listen to you, it sounds like you guys could be great coaches. What about that down the line? Well, uh, possibly. I've coached a year at a university high school, JV uh -huh. uh, girls, and uh, that was definitely fun. But yeah. coaching and playing are two completely different things. Is so many times you just want to get out there and do it for them because <laughs> it's easy for you but yeah. you know it's just having the the patience to be able to instruct you know somebody else mike it's in your it. blood it's in your blood to coach. right yeah. actually uh i coached golf last year at mission Dio High oh School great that's right that's under right. my dad yeah. so and uh i'm substitute teaching also in the district local okay. district uh, so eventually when i'm through with volleyball I'll, I'll probably end up teaching and coaching that's fantastic uh, that's fantastic. Give me an idea. Is it good to cross train? You know, we talk about cross training. Do you guys just play volleyball all the time? Uh, cross training is the best thing for you. If you keep playing volleyball, just straight volleyball, you're going to burn yourself out real quick. Uh -huh. you know, it's just, it becomes a job after a while, and you don't want that feeling. You want it to be fun still because that keeps you hungry. Yeah. My, myself, I cross train. I uh, mountain bike ride, do a little uh, boxing. Um, I've just taken up Aikido and uh, some Tai Chi, which is martial arts. Uh, more mental disciplines and golf too. Kept you just you read golf. my mind when you said that. What about you? What kind of cross training besides uh, golf? Are you play doing? a lot of golf, weightlifting, mm -hmm. uh, basketball, of course. Like right. playing basketball. Right. So yeah, you just got to keep a variety in there. I think volleyball you can only play if you played every day, like Chad said, you'd burn out. Plus, you know, your body just breaks down. The sand's really deep. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really hard on your body. So you need days off where you just either do nothing or you know lift weights. I right. lift a lot of weights. And, uh, or you work more on your mental side, because the mental part of the game, once you get to a certain level at the AVP, the only, the only difference separating you between a lot of the players is the mental game. Because at that level, you know, everyone hits the ball hard, everyone can set well, blocks really, really big, you know, some, of course, are larger than others. Yeah. But it's all upstairs. Yeah. Once you get up that level, those people don't make mistakes. You know, if you make a mistake, and they've got you. So you got to keep your mental game in there. You, you say that so right, because I remember at the Manhattan tournament, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Van Der Wey and Adam Johnson had their right. problems. Mentally, you yeah. saw them go downhill, and they ended up losing that game. I want to thank these two gentlemen. Obviously, great, great guests here on Coach's Corner. A lot of wisdom and talking volleyball. We'll be back with two more. Maybe we'll see these guys in the finals opposing each other. We'll have more of Coach's Corner right after this. <laughs> Wake up to CNN Morning News, and you'll find the latest news, weather, and sports, and so much more. Each morning, we take a fresh look at a changing world and meet the newsmakers and trendsetters who keep it spinning. And we invite you to call in and voice your opinion. We want to know what you think. Join Donna Kelly and Bob Kane and open your eyes to a different kind of morning news. CNN Morning News. Weekdays on CNN and Dimension Cable. It's time to take the pay-per-view getaway with Hollywood's hottest movies right at home on pay-per-view. Take off to a faraway place with the most glamorous stars. Have the adventure of your life or share a thrilling romance. It's never been so easy and it won't take a bite out of your wallet. 
August is the perfect time to get away. Order a movie on pay-per-view tonight. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to this week's edition of Coach's Corner on location at Lake Mission Viejo. Joining me now for the last segment of the show is uh, Kurt Riedel, a graduate of Capistrano Valley High School in 1987, and his good partner and friend, Darren Utterback. And you might remember just moments ago, we had his older brother on, Daryl, who is the tournament director. And oddly enough, you're going to be playing your other brother in the semifinals with Chad Jones and Dwayne Utterback. We were just talking about that. How does that feel? Uh, that's gonna be fun. I'm not sure. I haven't played them maybe for five years or so. It's been a while since we've hooked up against each other in this tournament. We were hoping to maybe see them in the finals, but we lost this morning, so that's not possible. But yeah, we're down to the top four when we get to play them, so I feel pretty fortunate. It's gonna be interesting. And, and Kurt, you guys had uh, kind of funny how you ended up here because yesterday you lost to Godshaw and Olsen. A little while ago you beat Godshaw and Olsen, and now you're in the semifinal. How was it? What was the difference in the two games? Well, we won both, actually, but we were down the first match, 13-6, uh, and we came back and we beat them. Pardon me, they came through the loser's bracket. Yeah, we beat them both times. And then uh, we were playing them this morning, and uh, the same situation happened. They were up on us, and we just made some key plays and put them away. We were talking about the uh, mental edge in this game with some of the other players playing. How, how much mental is this game? It's very mental. It's just a matter of uh, sticking in there and not giving up. Yeah. It's concentration. Now, how do you guys, I know you get used to it, because you play here as much as you can. How do you get used to the heat? Oh, actually, we don't play here that much. It, it seems like the younger kids that live around this area, because they can get here. But once once kids get to where they can drive, or they get a little bit older, and they can compete down at the beach, you go down there, because the court's a little bit tougher to play on, the competition's stiffer. Um, so you, I don't think you really get used to the heat. Yeah. You're used to an ocean breeze, usually. Right. And, that's pretty tough. And that's a good thing that you brought up is the breeze. I know later yeah. on in the day, this place is pretty notorious for the breeze picking yeah. up. How will you serve? Uh, I'm having some back problems, so I won't jump serve. I'll probably just serve deep floaters yeah. and, and move the ball around quite a bit. What about yourself? Uh, I'll jump serve depending on the wind. If, if I got a little wind in my face or, or to the side of me, then I'll, I'll, I'll jump serve. Otherwise, it just depends on who you're playing. Right. But sometimes you just really want to pick on someone, move them around, and, and make them think a lot. And we were talking earlier also about a team being balanced. Uh, are you guys a balanced attack, or do you have a strong side, and maybe do you have a weak side and vice versa? How does it go? I can hit well. I can play either side equally as well. Okay. But um, for this tournament, Darren's better on the right, so I'm going to stay on the left. That's, yeah. that's my stronger point. And her jumps close to 40 inches in that. Wow. And I got an average or a little above average maybe jump. but. Um, it just, since I know I'm going to get every ball, I might as well play the side I'm strongest on, so that's how we come up with that. Yeah. Now, I know that you guys are doing a lot of club volleyball. You're doing a lot of coaching with the Beach yeah. Cities club team. How is it uh, coaching and then coming out and playing? Do you find yourself coaching yourself and talking yourself mentally? Uh, sometimes a little bit, but uh, not, not really so much. You have, you have to remind yourself sometimes. You'll do some things just floating around on the court, not really thinking about what you're supposed to do, and you get caught um, off balance, leaning one way or another or something. It's just little things sometimes you talk yourself through. But, you know, we, I think we complement each other because we both have kind of the same philosophy mentally on how to play and everything. And I think Kurt can get on me or I can get on him and we know how to take it from each other. Speaking of that, about getting on each other and, and maybe mentally saying something that might make an impact, uh, do you ever say anything to your partner here? Oh, yeah, <laughs> quite a bit, but uh, it goes both ways. It's yeah. just, it's just to keep each other in check so we always know who's going to do what and, and where we want the ball to go against certain teams. What about that also? Do you, do you ever have any things that you say that might work when Kurt maybe is not doing what, what exactly you want him to be doing? Yeah, you know, just, just got to remind each other that it's a long game. And that it's, it, it, that's what we did against Scott Sean Olsen both times. You know, he just kept coming back to me. Look, it's a long way. This game's not over. And he just keep chipping away. And yeah. I think that might have something to do with um, that might have something to do with age or something and experience because both times we played them, I heard them, you know, getting really anxious to put the game away. Uh -huh. And we just keep chipping away. We've got nothing to lose at that point. You feel like you get the advantage, too. When you start chipping away at a lead, yeah. it's almost mentally, you know, your advantage. Yeah, because it's like being an underdog all of a sudden because at that point you're not supposed to win. Yeah. 
so you get to just chip away and see what happens. Yeah. Kurt, how difficult is it to get ready for this event? You guys, as you say, do a lot of coaching. Sometimes when you do a lot of coaching, you don't get a chance to play a lot. Is it tough to come out here, get in shape, and play? Uh, yeah, sometimes it is, especially for me. I just graduated from UC Irvine and um, coaching full-time. I haven't had a lot of time to play. So I have to go out whenever I can, yeah. um, whether it's with Darren or with somebody else, and just try to get some games. And uh, it's been overcast lately, so yeah. <laughs> the heat is nice, but you know, it just you have to take precautions, drink a lot of fluids so you don't cramp, and you know, maybe go out in the water and stay in the shade yeah. until you come up to play. Now, Darren, I know you're, you're as your brother doing this event, directing this event over the last 11 years. Is it kind of odd sometimes to come out out of a practice situation where there's nobody really around, maybe down at Capitol Beach where you guys have some people around, but you come out here and you got the banners and you got people sitting right next to the court. Today we've got TV cameras out here. Do you have to mentally also get ready for that? Actually, I think it's kind of funny because I, I think this is a chance for everyone to experience just somewhat what it's like to be a pro. Uh -huh. Maybe not the level of play, but the atmosphere and all the people watching and the banners and all that. And for me, it's just it's just really fun. I yeah. mean, I, I actually play better. It's easier to get up for that and everything. The people certainly don't make me nervous, um, but I can see where they maybe make other people nervous. But sure. most of the people are friends that are watching or family or whatever. And uh, a lot of the people know each other. It's become somewhat of a reunion. It's yeah, really fun. I think you're right. I, I see people here every year, the same people coming back. Kurt, will you come back next year? Yeah, I will. Yeah, and uh, give me an idea real quickly about some advice that you can give to the younger kids maybe 16, 17, thinking about playing this event. Do you encourage it if they're in the local area? Yeah, I do. They, they really should. The best thing probably for them is to pick a partner that um, is capable of handling, you know, the heat mm -hmm. and all, everything else and just, just play a lot, probably down here. That would probably help them out the most. Yeah. And then just to go ahead and do it. Any words of wisdom before we leave? I think that, like <laughs> you were saying with the kids just now, I think there's a lot of kids that put up too much emphasis on the hitting. Uh-huh and not the ball control. When you get out here, you better have good ball control or it just won't happen. I there are some good kids, good players, high school kids that just graduated and stuff that got knocked out yesterday that hitting-wise, they can hit better than I could ever dream of, but yeah. they don't have the fundamentals. They put too much emphasis on the hitting. You have to be able to play all aspects of the game. That's right. Maybe it's going from that six-man high school volleyball to the two-man where you got to work a little harder. Right. I want to thank you both for coming on the show. Good luck in your match. I know which either, which either way it goes. Somebody's going to be voting for another back going yeah. in the final. Yeah. All right, congratulations to you right. guys. And Thanks, coming yeah. up next on the Game of the Week will be two semifinals games with uh, the people here at Lake Mission Viejo. And then after that will be the finals here at Lake Mission Viejo. Please stay tuned for the Game of the Week. For these gentlemen, for all my guests today on Coach's Corner, thanks for watching. We'll see you in a few minutes.